Hello, magical people. I have my ears on so we know this is a Disney video, okay? Today we're gonna be talking about Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. We had the privilege of staying there a couple months ago. I did get some footage for you guys. It's all over the place because that's how I am. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a little bit of information about Fort Wilderness and then I'm gonna be popping in some vlog footage that I got and just random clips and things like that. It's gonna be fine. Everything's fine, we're doing great. I took some notes on Fort Wilderness, so if you see me looking down, it's because I am looking at my phone to reference so I have my life together. I wanna start off talking about Fort Wilderness because some people don't even know Fort Wilderness is, exists, but basically, Fort Wilderness is a campground. They call it a resort and campground, I believe, because they do have cabins on site. So you can stay in cabins at Fort Wilderness. You can also just stay with a tent if you want. They have tent sites and then they have spots for RVs. They also have spots that fit RVs and tents. So if you're bringing say your family in your RV and you have extended family coming, they can stay on your campsite in a tent or they could go get their own cabin and you're in your RV. It's really great. It's huge. I wanna say John told me it's like 750 acres. I could be making that up, but it's beautiful. And it's so funny because there are so many RV sites, so many, yet you feel like you are completely all by yourself. And I'll insert a little clip of our RV site here so you can see exactly what I mean. It's very wooded and shaded in and it just felt very private. I do want to let you know that when it comes to Fort Wilderness, even if you don't have an RV, you can actually rent an RV. They have a certified Disney vendor that's listed directly on Disney's website. So you can actually rent an RV. So it's kind of cool because if you're a Disney fan and you've considered RV life, but you're not sure if it's for you, that might be an option because you can rent an RV, test it out, see if you like it. And that's what we did. We actually rented a class C RV when we moved from Hawaii to Virginia, we landed in, in California, picked up the RV and then drove it across the country to Tennessee. And that's how we confirmed that we wanted an RV. So it may be an option for you to just rent it. What they do is they deliver it directly to the campsite and you can just enjoy having an RV for the duration of your stay. So that's pretty cool. The dining options to me at Fort Wilderness are one of the only downsides that I think to this resort especially because the property is humongous. So I feel like there should be several dining options sprinkled throughout so then that way everybody can get what they want. So the first option is called P&J Southern Takeout. And it's just pretty basic. It's like barbecue, uh, some chicken tenders, mac and cheese. Great for kids that only eat chicken tenders and mac and cheese, just not a lot of variety. So we went to I think it was called PJ's or PNJ's takeout, Southern takeout, and got way too much food, but this is what happens on the first night, and we're starving because we never had lunch. Okay, so I got a strawberry shortcake. I also got a cookies and cream cupcake over her. Um, John got a burger with some french fries. I got, this was like, um, I can't remember what they called it, some type of salad, and it has like blue cheese and all that stuff on it, and then I got the grilled chicken nuggets so I can add it to the salad. Um, they gave us an extra french fries, it looks like. Some grilled chicken, this is supposed to be for the salad, but I'm gonna save this for all of our, for tomorrow. We got some mashed potatoes on the side and also some mac and cheese. So that is the entire lineup of the PNJs or PJs or whatever it is, food for night one. And this was like a total of $50, so wasn't cheap. Uh, the next option is Meadow Snack Bar, which is literally just like a poolside snack bar. The hours are not great because they go along with the pool and then the variety is also not there. They have a place called Crockett's, Crockett's Tavern, which I was like excited to go to because I'm like, that sounds really cool. And it's at, I wanna say it's at like Pioneer Hall, which is just a really cool area in general. It turns out it's just bar service. So you just get alcoholic beverages there. And I wanna say they have little poo-poos. So they have like a dip, a dip situation, I wanna say. I could be completely making that up, but they have like a couple appetizers, but barely any at all. And then the next option is the Chuck Wagon, which we did go to. I will insert a clip here of the food that we got from the Chuck Wagon. All right, so for tonight's dinner, we went to a food truck that was outside of Pioneer Hall. 
we got a mac and cheese burger with french fries, jalapeno poppers, a kid's chicken nuggets, and some corn dog nuggets, and the kid's thingy came with grapes and a milk. So that is dinner for tonight. And then Trails End is a breakfast and dinner location. I didn't go there for dinner because I, they didn't do takeout. They only did sit down, at least when we were there. It wasn't available on mobile ordering. I did want to try it for breakfast, but we never got a chance to. They have skillet breakfast that's supposed to be really good. But again, at this one, there's really not a big variety, and it's, it's very basic options for food. And then the last food option is if you also opt to get the hoopty doo musical review tickets. Now, I will say the hoopty doo menu is delicious, and the hoopty doo review is one of my favorite things that is offered at Disney World. If you have a chance to do hoopty doo review, you need to. It is funny, it's entertaining, it's captivating, the music is awesome, and the food is delicious. They do, uh, it's like Southern style food and it's like baked beans, fried chicken, all that good stuff. They serve their drinks in mason jars. It's just fun. And the, the staff comes around with like metal buckets to drop the food on the table during a song. It's just, it's so much fun. And they also have like the world's best strawberry shortcake. And I'm not like a huge strawberry shortcake person, but the one that's offered at the hoop to do is so good that it's just chef's kiss. So that is, so that's the entire dining options at this time at Fort Wilderness. We're in June of 2023. Now, when it comes to the other amenities, I'm going to roll through some of the things that you probably come to expect when you're staying at an RV site or a campground of some form. But one thing that they do have that not all campgrounds offer is Wi-Fi, And it was pretty de decent. It wasn't great, but it was pretty decent. They have a laundry room. So I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna insert. I got a good amount of clips when it came to the laundry room. Now I have the exciting task of getting some laundry done um, while on vacation. Uh, because, you know, we brought our house with us on vacation, so we still have to, like, adult and everything. So I'm going to head over to, they have these little comfort stations that have bathrooms and laundry. Um, so I get a vacation from the children for a little bit. I'll probably record so you guys can see what the laundry room looks like here at Fort Wilderness. I had a magical day at Magic, at Magic Kingdom. Like, I can't even begin to describe. It was so amazing. I will do my best to record at some point and explain how awesome it was. But for now, I'm gonna go run and do some laundry. And then later tonight, our plan is to go to Geyser Point at Wilderness Lodge, cause it's right next door and just do like a mobile order and pick it up. Okay, so this is the laundry facility here at Fort Wilderness. So they get like a little sink situation over here. Um, they've got the washers, the dryers. There's like a folding area. They also have a vending machine that has different laundry type items you may need. And then they also have a drink vending machine in the back. And it looks like more folding stations over here. And even like if you wanna dry up some stuff just by hanging them. And this is where you can pay for the laundry, which I just realized I don't have a debit card or anything because I'm so used to Apple Pay. So I'm gonna have to walk back to the campsite to grab that, but that's fine. I'll get everything loaded up and then run back. I brought our wagon, it's super dirty, please excuse it. Um, so then, cause our laundry is freaking heavy as hell. But these are like huge, so I'll be able to fit one load. I'm pretty pumped about that. But anyways, so I'm gonna get going on this. And I have a feeling this is one of those ones where you can um, watch it on your phone. Uh, let's see, what does it say over here? Yeah, there's a, there's a status alert thingy. So I can scan that QR code and then I'll be able to keep an eye on when it's done. So that's really awesome. On the outside of the comfort station, they have bags for ice and then like an ice machine. Uh, it's debit or credit only. And also at the comfort station is some bathrooms. Um, and we are, I wanna say they put a comfort station like on each loop. I could be making that up. It could be like two loops share it, but we are like three campsites down from the comfort station. So that's amazing. I just had to show you guys. So I'm doing the washing thingy and then it actually lets me pick. So I'm using three of the washers. Um, so it lets me pick up to four washers. So I can just select the three 
And then it's like, yeah, are you sure? That's all you want. Okay, so now what I have to do is I go over to the washers and then I show them what I wanna do. So I have washer number one over here and we're gonna just do brights and delicates. And it's good to go. Over here, brights, delicates. I wonder if I'm supposed to select only one. I don't know, I just want it on cold water, that's all I care about. Brights, delicates. And that's it, and then I can use the app. So it says it's about it's gonna take 34 minutes, but like I said before, I can use the app to um, be able to see what's going on. So that's really cool. Look how cool the view is inside the laundry room. Like, come on now. So serene. They have a chair in here, like literally a single chair. So if you wanted to, you could just like read a book while you wait for your laundry to be done which sounds like an ideal thing for me, but I just, I can't in good conscience do that to John, you know? So I'm about to pay for my dryer cycles and then I will be back and laundry is done. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Kate, for that riveting update on the laundry room services. They also have comfort stations between the loops for the RV. So if you're staying in a tent or your RV bathroom is just lackluster and you want to you want to spring for a large shower. They do also have comfort stations, so I'll insert more clips here. So these are our showers. They have a handicap accessible one. Nobody else is in here, so I'm not being like creepy and recording people in the bathroom, by the way. Um, but there's three different shower stalls. And then over on this side is just like a regular restroom area with sinks. that it's cool toilet you've seen that before thank you again Kate for the riveting update with the toilet footage there's two options to get transportation to the Disney parks from Fort Wilderness the first one is that you can actually take ferry boats over which is very very convenient and it's just honestly like when you go on a ferry boat at seven o'clock in the morning heading to Magic Kingdom it is just so awesome. So the ferry boat takes you from Fort Wilderness to Magic Kingdom. Then once you're at Magic Kingdom, if you wanted to, you could easily take a monorail over to Epcot. You can take a monorail over to the Ticket and Transportation Center. So you have options once you're at Magic Kingdom. But also at Fort Wilderness, they have plenty of buses. So there's buses that come to each of the loops for the campground, and then it takes you to the different parks Disney Springs, different resorts, things like that. You also can obviously just take your personal vehicle, so that's what we decided to do. We had our truck from towing the RV down there, and so we just took our truck when we wanted to go to the parks. It was just the most convenient for us because of the children. The other thing when it comes to transportation, that's kind of like not really transportation, but it's transportation when on site, is that you can either bring your own or rent a golf cart directly at Fort Wilderness. The golf cart thing is so much fun. Like if you have a personal golf cart, because we saw the coolest golf carts. Like we saw one where like there was a stormtrooper um, breaking through the window of the front of a golf cart. We saw a tow mater one from cars. We saw a Pirates of the Caribbean one. It's just, it looks like so much fun. And then we saw it in all different shapes and sizes, two seaters up to eight seaters. And then, like I said, you can rent it directly from Fort Wilderness. And that just makes it way easier to get around because the campground is humongous like john that's a another thing is we didn't realize that up at the food area for p and j's southern takeout i did the mobile order and i told john hey can you go pick it up i'll stay with the kids you go pick it up there's absolutely nowhere to park unless you have a golf cart there's golf cart parking but there's not personal vehicle parking so he had to drive all the way back and then he ended up having to walk up which we were like in the middle of the campground and it was all the way at the other end. So it was a very long walk. So that's the only other thing is like having a golf cart makes it way easier for stuff like that because you cannot take your personal vehicle. You can drive your personal vehicle around the campground, but they don't have many parking options for you at the various amenities throughout the resort. Okay, so then the next thing I wanted to talk about was some of the activities that they have at the 
at the resort. I, I don't know what to call it, campground. We'll call it campground. They have playgrounds sprinkled throughout so your kids can go have a blast, like as if they're not exhausted enough from Disney parks. They also have arcades. I think there were, it was listed that there's two different arcades. For activities, they also have a Chip and Dale's campfire sing-along. I'm going to insert a clip right here of the area. We didn't go to the Chip and Dale's campfire sing-along, but we did go to the area. So I will go ahead and insert a clip right here so you can see where it's held. So over here, we have like a little stadium seating situation and they do like a campfire sing-along with Chip and Dale. And then they also do outdoor movies over here. Tonight is Freaky Friday, and tomorrow was Wally. -E. Um, I think last night's was like some Pooh Bear movie, but that's really cool that they have that. When they do s'mores, there's a little fire pit. Very awesome. We're taking Stella on a little walk right now um, up to go try and find there's food trucks. So we're gonna go up to the food trucks, try and grab some food. So that is exciting. Thank you so much, Kate, for that. They also have an archery experience. My favorite thing at Fort Wilderness that I think just makes it stand out from anything else is they have what's called Tri-Circle D Ranch. And at Tri-Circle D Ranch, they have a bunch of different like pony rides, horse rides. You can just see the horses. They even have wagon rides. And during Christmas time, they have sleigh rides. So you can go do like a Christmassy sleigh ride. And what's cool is at Fort Wilderness, a lot of people decorate their campsites. So a lot of people stay there for a longer period of time during Christmas time and they decorate their campsite. So it just feels so magically Christmassy. They also offer fishing at Fort Wilderness. There's bikes, canoes, kayaks. They have basketball courts, volleyball courts. There's also jogging and walking trails all throughout. And then the other thing that I love personally about Disney, it's just nostalgic to me that I feel like not a lot of people experience is there's this thing called the electrical water parade in Disney World that Disneyland doesn't have. And it's basically every 15 minutes, this water pageant goes to different resorts. So it's like Fort Wilderness, Wilderness Lodge, Polynesian, Grand Floridian, and the Contemporary, I wanna say. If I have footage from one of our previous trips, I'll insert it here. <laughs> really cool like 80s 90s vibe little electrical water pageant that is just to me like I said just nostalgic and at Fort Wilderness you can go and view the electrical water parade so to me that's another great amenity they also have pools here um so there's two different pools with two different hot tubs and they also have a bunch of games at the pools so there's like a whole extra recreation option there of like chess boards and they have ping pong tables and stuff like that so i'll insert clips here of that all right this is the pool area so there's like a little splash pad but it's closed for refurbishment right now refurbishment and then over yonder there's a really cool slide like a open tube slide it looks like it is busy here the pool is completely packed little river we're on a walk right now letting Stella out because she was a good girl while we were in the parks all day oh and then at the end of this little road here there's a playground so that is totally fun and it looks like they also have little picnic tables and benches there's like I just saw like a big checkers board and then over there there's even tennis courts over here there's a little volleyball court and then over here there's even a pavilion um, that looks like you can like reserve so you can have birthday parties and such. There's some girls that are over there and this is like the back side of the pool. It's like a party happening over there. On the other side of the pool, they have this little like recreation area. There's like ping pong, pool table, fun stuff like that. Thank you, Kate, for that footage. 
So just overall to wrap it up, I know this was kind of like all over the place, but like I said, I just wanted to come in and talk about Fort Wilderness because I feel like there's not that much information out there. It is on the pricier side. If you are somebody that does RVing, you're probably used to paying $30 to $120 for your RV sites. These RV sites, when we went, it was $250. Now I will say that was around spring break time, so we're paying probably the premium prices. But we've priced it out at other times of the year and it's anywhere from 200 to 250 dollars so this is a very very pricey rv resort but i will say that to me the amenities make it worth the value so i think that there's definitely value there and i think it's worth it i also will say that honestly you don't even if you stay at fort wilderness you barely even know, need to go to the disney parks you will not run out of things to do at fort wilderness there is so much to do there and like i said a million times in this video the the campground is huge it is huge so you could really fill up your time very easily with all of the things that you can do at fort wilderness we absolutely love fort wilderness i grew up going to fort wilderness we also, almost every time we came to Disney World, even if we weren't staying at Fort Wilderness, we would pop over there to go to the Hoopty Doo Review. We love the Hoopty Doo Review. We actually have a, a trip booked next year already with our RV because we just love it so much. And I cannot wait to experience it during Halloween and Christmas because people go crazy with the decorations. Like after you're done watching this video, just go YouTube like Fort Wilderness at holidays and see exactly the level that people get extra on these holidays. If you guys have any questions about Fort Wilderness or if you feel like I missed anything, feel free to just leave a comment down below and I will be happy to answer it. And the next time we stay, if you let me know what you're looking for, I'd be happy to do a more in-depth review of certain amenities. It's just this time we were only there two nights and three days, or maybe it was three nights and four days, I don't remember. But we were there for a short period of time and the kids were four months and 15 months, so it was hard. Like, my twins are four months and my toddler is 15 months. So it's a little bit difficult for me to, like, stop and film because I was busy momming. You know, they're getting a little bit more manageable now, so I'm able to kind of get more footage. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please come check me out. It's at Kate Koska. I'll put it up on the screen here, but I'll also link it down below because anytime we do pop over to Disney, I usually do stories and things like that so you can get like a live happening in the day while we're at the parks. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some insight into Fort Wilderness. I hope that you'll subscribe if you want to stick around for more of this. There will be plenty more Disney videos coming. I plan to do a lot of informative options for Disney trips, when it, especially when it comes to managing toddlers and babies inside the park because I feel like I've taken time to pull information from places to try and be as efficient as possible. So I'm hoping to take all of the information that I've compiled and then get it to you guys directly. Thank you so much again for being here. I hope you all have a magical day. Bye.